everybody and welcome to part two of my creating realistic looking characters video. Now this should be the last one but we will find out when I get to the end if it's long enough to make one video or if it's going to have to be spread over another part. Before I get started I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who subscribed. We've hit 173 last time I checked which is absolutely awesome. I never thought that many people would be interested in watching my stuff. I've got a Discord channel which I'm going to pop in the comments below. So if you wanted to request a specific video topic or if you just wanted to say hi, you can jump on there. And also I've got links to my subscribe star page for those people who wanted to support my work and get free previews and early access to any of the games I create. So let's jump right into this then. In the last video, we talked about using lighting to make your characters look more realistic and I alluded to a couple of topics in this video so the first thing I do want to talk about is where you get your assets from it's very important if you want realistic looking characters that you are very picky about where you buy your assets from and who creates them because it's very easy for a content creator to make their renders look great for the preview images of their product they know the situations in which those assets look good you might buy something from the daz studio store or from one of the other many stores that you can buy assets for daz from thinking that the demo pictures look great and then when you get them into your own scenes and you try to light them they look absolute garbage make sure when you're buying your products that you're being picky and that you're buying them from reputable sources as well because you can't get refunds on digital products like this once you've downloaded it you can't get a refund be very careful about that one so in terms of getting your character to look realistic we're going to go into the surfaces tab and i'm not going to select the whole character this time because we just you know we want to be able to see the differences that we're making so we're going to close in right up into the character's face as you can see it's a little bit choppy because of the character that we've got loaded it's got a lot of geometry there we go and we're going to select the face texture make sure that we've got the surface selection tool selected we're going to click on the face and boom and then we come into our surfaces tab and you can see that the properties on the right have the face textures details selected but we're going to open up so that we make sure we've actually only got the face selected by clicking on the character's name in the surfaces pane we're going to go through this we're not going to go through every single property we're just going to talk about the ones that are going to make a difference to us so i'm actually going to click off of the surface selection tool now so that we get rid of that yellow highlight so before we do anything else we're going to quickly jump into ira and we're going to have a look at how it looks it looks pretty good the lighting is nice and soft we're using the bog standard hdri that comes with das studio here and it looks pretty good so we're going to jump straight back out of das studio okay so the first thing that you're going to come up to that's of any interest is the base color and what you should have is the face texture map in the left hand side and it should be one 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 it should be white in this if you change that it's going to change the opacity of the texture mask on the on the character and you don't want that you really don't want that so make sure that that's white and the texture is loaded into your character the next one is diffuse roughness now this is an interesting property because in my humble opinion it's not named very well what you're changing when you change the diffuse roughness is how much scattering the light does when it hits the surface of the texture if we were to drag this up and we jump into nvidia ira mode again you can see that the character looks slightly darker than it did in the previous model but it also looks quite soft it looks a lot softer than it did if we were to now drop that back down to zero and you'll be able to see side by side the two effects so there you can see that the highlights are slightly brighter and the shadows are slightly darker so it's kind of creating the scattering effect which reduces the contrast on the skin surface so that can be useful it's a situational that one but i quite like having the higher contrast 
on my skin so I generally leave that at zero. There's really no reason why you couldn't change it if you wanted to. The next property is your translucency. The translucency, I suppose the best way of describing it, is kind of like the melanin effect on your on your skin so you can actually increase and reduce now in this case the translucency map has been changed to a texture so when we change the value up or down it's not going to make a huge amount of difference it'll just make the skin look slightly more solid or slightly less but as you can see the color difference isn't dramatic she just looks slightly paler in this one so if we change that back to 0.5 you'll notice that is a very subtle difference but when it comes to a lot of maps on a lot of characters there won't actually be a translucency map at all it'll just be a color it's a good way of adding a suntan to your characters but it's uh yeah so again playing with this one it's going to change the color effects of the surface's skin in terms of realism though it's not going to make your characters look any more or less realistic in reality. The next one I really want to talk about is your glossy layered weight and your glossy properties in general. Skin isn't glossy unless it's wet. In this model we've actually got a glossy layered weight character map as well which is basically saying that certain parts of the character's skin are more glossy than others. Here you can see that the gloss to t-zone around the eyes and the nose and the lips the chin and parts of the eyelid are slightly more glossy than others but then still quite low values this is a sign of a good character build because the characters got maps rather than just having uh, a white block here and then all of the skin is equally glossy or not but in a lot of cases you'll see that this is just a color normally one 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 normally white and then a property slider which you can adjust up and down and that just affects how kind of shiny and reflective certain parts of the skin are and then the glossy reflectivity and the glossy roughness now glossy roughness and diffuse roughness are close in what they do it just affects how much the light scatters from the glossier parts of the skin and then the glossy reflectivity obviously will give you that mirror shine so if we jump into nvidia iray mode again you can see that at the moment the character doesn't have a particularly shiny face you can see the lips and the t-zone have got a little bit more glossiness to them but not too bad so if we were to yank this up to a higher value you can see that the skin looks a little bit more glossy in general but it's not too bad to be fair because we've got the glossy map the next thing that i really wanted to talk about is the bump map and the normal map and what these are these are the things that are going to apply the texture to the skin so the diffuse will add the color the glossiness will obviously add the shininess the specularity of the skin and now the base bump and the normal map will actually add the fine detail to the skin texture the bare minimum of any character that you buy from any store should have a diffuse texture it should have a base bump and it should have a normal map it should have the color and the texture of the skin if it doesn't have those properties then it means that you've been swindled because you've bought a product that is barely had any time and effort put into it so you know you should have these properties and you shouldn't really need to play with them to be honest to get your characters to look realistic the next property that we're going to look at is the top coat weight now i've avoided mentioning the last concept that i'm going to talk about until this point think about the shaders that are applied to your character's skin as car paint it's got three layers you've got your diffuse texture then you've got your glossiness texture and then you've got your top coat weight now top coat is not necessary to make your character look realistic but it can be an interesting way of adding more effects in this character it's been used to apply highlights and reflectivity to the skin but it doesn't necessarily have to be there basically any time that this is changed to a number above zero you're adding that third layer onto the skin and then you can apply textures to it you can apply 
uh, properties to it so in this case we've applied quite a rough so quite a lot of scattered light bouncing off the top layer of the skin with a tiny little bit of reflectivity but as i said this isn't really a hundred percent necessary you don't have to do that for the character to be real it's just a, an added layer shall we put it so subsurf scattering this is what we were talking about where when the light travels through an object it scatters and then it's transmitted back out at the moment it's got this nice pink effect if i were to change that to a yellow and then we give iray a second the skin actually looks more pink now if i had to go to edit and undo change the subsurface scattering color you can see now that the skin's taken back on it's slightly original in more yellowish tone and now matches the skin color of the neck which is a peculiar behavior but that's the way that it works again this is one of those properties that rather than trying to get your head around the science of it you're much better off just putting your character into Nvidia IRA preview mode and playing with the property and seeing what happens. These last few properties are where you can tile textures. Obviously on a character you don't want to do this on certain things, certain objects like maybe paintings you might want to move your textures around a little bit but in the purposes of this video they're irrelevant really. The cutout opacity as entertaining as it is to reduce the opacity of your character's skin it's also entirely unnecessary. Really as you can see this in this video there's a lot of properties to play with on the surfaces tab and there's no right or wrong answer. A lot of your realism is really going to be based in where you spend your money when you buy the characters, when you download them, who you get them from. Just because something's on the DAS Studio Store doesn't mean it's going to be a good product. I've bought many, many things from the DAS Studio Store that have turned out to be absolute garbage. Unfortunately, that's just the nature of the beast. You just kind of have to take it on the chin and try again, really. I generally avoid buying from third party stores or just be careful before you buy your products. And then by all means come into the surfaces tab, have a bit of a play, try and figure out which, which, which things work best for you. In most situations you will find that tweaking small properties will make a subtle difference but those tweaks will not work in every single situation so you're going to need to familiarize yourself with the surfaces tab get in there have a play around and then just work out what effects work best for you you've got realistic shapes which is another thing that's quite important a lot of characters you'll buy have got exaggerated features such as eyes that are too large lips that are too large so make sure you've got decent characters and light them correctly and then hopefully you'll be pushing out some really good looking renders i hope you found this video useful give it a thumbs up and a subscribe subscriptions always help because it lets me know how many people are interested to see more of my content i am going to be working on a lot more dash studio videos as well as renpy videos as well Hit the notification icon so you get alerted when I've uploaded a new video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks very much. Bye bye.